All right, in this video, we're going to see how to find a potential function for a vector field. So we're given a three-dimensional vector field, f, and first component function is 12x squared. The second component function is cosine y cosine z. And the third component function is 1 minus sine y sine z. Uh, and what we're going to do is uh, essentially work backwards to the potential scalar function of three variables. Uh, lowercase f of x, y, z, um, that this function is the gradient of. Um, and so if it's a conservative vector field, then you should be able to find this potential function. Um, and since the gradient is based on partial derivatives, going backwards is going to be partial integration, though integration of a single variable is inherently partial integration, right? Um, but we may not have done that before. So uh, the thing to keep in mind is since we have three variables, three independent variables, that the constant of integration we normally get with an indefinite integral um, is actually a function of the other two variables that you're not integrating with respect to. So you'll see that play out. And, and the notation can vary quite a bit. I kind of chose to use uh, lowercase g for all those functions and then do subscripts one, two, and three. Um, I feel like the book tries to use different letters, but um, I don't think it works as well. Uh, all right, so with step one, and you can do these in any order, steps one, two, and three, uh, I just go in alphabetical order X, Y, then Z. <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll take uh, the uh, first component function, which is referred to as P, um, and we will integrate it with respect to X. So it's written here as P of X, but of course it could depend on more than just x, right? Here it is a, strictly a function of x, but in general, any of these component functions can be uh, a function of all three variables, right? So f uh, should be the integral of 12x squared dx, right? So this is just a regular calc one integration. Um, there's no other variables y and z to ignore. If y and z did appear here, we'd treat them as constants. <clears throat> and uh, the antiderivative for 12x squared is going to be 4x cubed. But instead of saying plus c, um, we're going to say plus g1, which is the function of y and z. Because if you were to take the derivative of the potential function with respect to x, if there were terms that only had y and z, they would be treated as constants and their derivative would be zero. And so that's why you're you're not seeing them. So they could be, they could still be there. Okay. Um, all right, so next up, we're gonna do the integration of the second component function, which is denoted q uh, with respect to y. Uh, so this one does depend on more than just y. It's got y and z, uh, but we're integrating with respect to y. So we're going to treat z as a constant here. And uh, so think of this as, you know, a constant times cosine and uh, the integral of cosine is sine. Uh, and of course that constant is still there. Uh, for our constant of integration, it's now a function of the other two variables, x and z, and we'll use g2 of x, z for that. All right, the last one of these is to take the third component function, which we're calling r, and integrate that with respect to z. So this one also depends on y and z, but now our variable of integration is z, and so we're treating y as a constant. So uh, also we have a constant, right? So the integral of one uh, with respect to z would just be z. Uh, and then the second term, negative sine y sine z, think of that as sine times a well, negative sine times a constant. Um, and we already know that uh, the integral of negative sine is cosine. Um, 
So you get that constant sine y, and then you get a cosine c. Uh, the third uh, constant of integration is the function g3, which depends on x and y. So the potential function should be the union of these antiderivatives. Um, and so that means if you see a term appear in more than one of these, it's uh, it's the same term and you just include it once. Um, and in anything that appears in these lists gets combined. So we can now list all the things. So from the step one, we know that there's a four X cubed. From steps two and three, uh, we know that there's a sine y cosine z. Since that term depended on both y and z, it's going to appear in both the y and z integrations. Uh, and then from the step three, we know that there's a plus z. Now, there could also be a constant. So sometimes people will just put c equals for this um, in place of the f. Uh, and that, that constant could be determined uh, if you had a specific value for the potential function. But at this stage, we'll just write it out. Um, but you could see people write it like this. Or just adding a plus Z there. So the validation will be to take the gradient and You know, we kind of started with this idea that there was f, and taking a partial x derivative would give us p. Taking a partial y derivative would give us q. And taking a partial z derivative would give us r, right? And what we just did is we kind of went backwards with that and took an x integral to get back to f from p. We took a y integral to get back to f from q, and we did a z integral to get back to f from r. And so that's why that those all go back to that same potential function f, but they only reveal part of the story, and you really need to combine them all together. All right, so let's do this validation. We're going to do the gradient of f, uh, which is a vector where we do partial f partial x is the first component, partial f, partial y is the second component, and partial f, partial z is the third component. So taking the partial derivative of f with respect to x, we're using the function in step four. Uh, only that first term has an x, and so we would get 12x squared. Everything else is zero. With the y derivative, only the second term has a y. Derivative of sine is cosine. The third term, or sorry, with the partial derivative of f with respect to z, both the second and third terms depend on z. And so we would need derivatives of both of those. The derivative of the second term with respect to z is a uh, constant times cosine, um, which will give you negative constant times sine. And then uh, the derivative of z with respect to z is plus one. And then what you want to do is you want to compare that with the original potential function uh, and make sure that the three components all match up, which they do. Um, you need to put the one in front on the third one, but otherwise we are good to go. All right, so we found a potential function and then validated with the gradient. We are all done with this methodology. Thank you so much for watching.